presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah chapter 60. I believe that's where the theme was taken from. The theme is arise. Am I correct? Glory be to God. Isaiah chapter 60. It may not be the precise place where the theme, you know, is taken from, but I'm teaching from there tonight. Isaiah chapter 60. Verse 1. Okay. Let's read it down to verse 3. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness, the people. But, somebody say, but. but. The Lord will arise over you. Amen. And his glory will be seen upon you. Amen. The Gentiles shall come to your light. Amen. And kings to the brightness of your rising. Amen. A living amen. amen. Glory be to God. There are some... Words there I want us to really examine because they are key words. And from there, the Holy Ghost will continue his work. The first word is arise. It may mean ordinary to you. Grammatically speaking, you may know what it means. But this is church. I want to go deeper and show you by the Spirit of God what this word really means spiritually. Arise means, number one, if you want to write, number one, it means to get up. To get up from where you are. It may mean to be upstanding. It also means to become operative. To arise means to get to work. It also means to be feasible. You see, as we are seated here now, if somebody should stand up, everybody will notice that person. Am I correct? Even by Shejokwe, if somebody should stand up, I ask somebody to stand up, that person automatically, immediately will be feasible. Amen? From today, you'll be feasible. In the name of Jesus. To arise can also mean to act or take action. To act or take action. It can also mean, I love this definition, to come up from a lower to a higher position. To come up from a lower position to a what? A higher position. And I pray in the name of Jesus, beginning from this moment, that will become your experience. Amen. Say better, amen. amen. Those are the few definitions of our life that, you know, I could lay my hands on. We don't need many of them. We only need a few of them to drive home what the Holy Spirit will be telling us tonight. Because after tonight, I'm very sure and I'm convinced that your life will never be the same. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Arise. Then that was get up. Become operative. Be active. Take action. Get up from where you are to a higher level. You are getting there. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now here is the heart of the message. Why is the Lord telling you and I to arise? Because if you look at that word, critically, it's a command. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a word of command. Am I correct? It's commanding you, arise. Do they? In other words, you are, you are somewhere. You are in a position. But he wants you to change position. 
And so, he's giving the command. He said, arise, lead them with the wire. It's a command. And it's a command that must be obeyed. He said, arise. So, why is God, or why will God ask you to do what? To arise. That's the question we must answer. And the question is in this passage of the scripture. Before I go into that, the other word I want us to examine is the word shine. He said, arise and what? A shine. What does it mean to shine? More people send you a shine in life. To shine simply means to manifest. To show color. Are you hearing me? Everybody wants to shine. And in the name of Jesus, in the midst of darkness, you will shine. The world we are in is darkness. And darkness, as long as a child of God, cannot overcome you. In fact, you are supposed to shine in the midst of darkness. Amen? Amen. And the light shines in darkness and darkness cannot do what? Comprehend it or overcome it. No darkness will overwhelm you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, the Lord is saying, arise and do what? And shine. Why will God say that? Why will God ask you to arise? Now, that may not mean uh, physical uh, upstanding. It may not, that is not what we are talking about here. Amen? But he's telling you to take a position. A better position. He said, arise and shine. Why will God ask you to arise and shine? <laughs> I'm going somewhere tonight. Because what did they look? Huh? I said you will arise. Amen. And you will shine. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, for the Lord to have said, arise and shine simply means you have what it takes to arise. That's number one. Listen. You didn't get what I said. For God to have told you or commanded you to arise means that you have what, what, what it takes to do what? To arise. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? Please stand up, sir. Why did you stand up? Sir? God bless you really good. There was a command. He had it and he stood up. What is the second reason? What made you to stand up? No. This is, I want to make it practical and drive home a point. Number one, you got it right because I commanded you to stand up and you had the word, you responded to it and you stood up. Correct? What is the second reason? You are almost there. He said he has legs. <laughs> Thank God he has legs. Eh? He has the strength to stand up. Hello? Take your sister. God bless you. Even after hearing stand up, if he doesn't have the strength to stand up. You remember that story in the book of Acts chapter 3? After Peter had prayed for that uh, 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 lame man, I said, stand up. The man was looking and said, Peter had to pull him out. Where did he I prayed for you. And strength came. Now, God is asking you to arise and shine. Number one reason why you must arise and shine is because you have what it takes to do what? To arise. And now, what is that? What do I have? Now, Study that scripture. Let's read it together. It says chapter 60. Follow me because I will soon wind up. It said, arise and shine for your light as what? Now, he has you to arise and shine. And it tells you why. Number one, you have the light to shine inside of you. Is that too deep for you? He said, he said, arise and shine. Shine for your light ask. You can't shine without light. It is only light that shine. Am I talking to somebody here? So when God says arise and shine, it means you have what it takes to do what? To arise 
and shine. And one of the things that it takes to arise and shine is what? Light. What is light? Revelation. Is it too deep for you? Revelation of what you must do. The light there means the word of God. It also means the revelation. The idea of what God wants you to do what? To do. He said it is inside of you. Stand up this man and shine because you have what it takes to shine. And one of the things that it takes to shine is what? Light. You want to shine in this world. Uh, you must know the word of God. And you must have the revelation of the word with you. And the spirit of God is saying, look, your light has come. You see, many of you listening to me, even those watching online, listen, you have what it takes to reign on this earth. But the point is that you are not making use of it. You have the word at your disposal. You have the light. Even Jesus Christ called himself our what? Our light. How many of you are born again here? How you carry lights? He said, I'm the light of the world. And this light dwells inside of you. Are you hearing me? So, if I have Jesus inside of me, anywhere I go, I must shine. If I have the word of God inside of me, no devil can stop me. I must shine. And you have it. Somebody say, have the light of God inside of me. Come on, talk like you mean it. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Am I talking? Have you got bed? Eba mi soro. Oni a ye ni kini. E mole a ye. Kini mole man she. You will shine. You have the light. You have the revelation. And you have above all, Jesus the light himself inside of you. So, no darkness can reign around you. Because Jesus, the light himself, dwells inside of you. Anywhere you go, you are supposed to shine there. You are supposed to express and demonstrate and show Jesus to the world. From today, that's what you begin to do. Amen. When people see you, they will see Jesus. Amen. Say, believe in amen. amen. Hallelujah. So, he, 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 he knows, or let's say, he knew you have the capacity, what it takes to do what? To arise and Shine. To ba mo pe o ni nkan to le fi ton ko ni so pe ko dide ko tan. O ti won ba fun e won le bere lowo e. But he know that he has given you what it takes to arise and do what and shine in this world. O ni okukun le bo aye. O ni but the second thing. O go Olorun yo se kini. Yo yo lara re. That's the second thing. He knows you have the light and the glory. What is the glory? The presence of God. Are you following me? Are you following me? He knew that he has given you two principal elements with which to shine with. Number one is what? The light. The second one is what? The glory. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of God huh? is risen. Who upon who? Upon you. What is glory? The tangible presence of God. Where you carry that, <laughs> you can do anything. And you can face any devil. And the two he has given you. So, he, 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 it's like he saw the person I was wondering, what are you doing here? Arise and shine because I have equipped you, I have empowered you with all you need to do what? To arise and shine. How many of you are getting what I'm sharing with you? You are men now. Amen? If you are still praying, it's a wrong prayer. The Lord, let me shine in this world. No. You just arise and do what? I shine. Because the light that you need to shine is already where? Inside of you, in the person of Jesus Christ himself. And you have the glory back in you, which is the tangible presence of God anywhere you go. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout Hallelujah. Open your Bible, whether it's electro electronic or hard copy, open it to Isaiah chapter 60. Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Let's read it. Let's read it together. Let's read it together. Verse 1. Just verse 1. Are you ready? 
Can you see it on the screen too? One, two, three, go. Read it loud and clear. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Now, read this grammatically. It says, arise, shine, for. The reason why you must arise and shine is because, number one, what? What is delight? Jesus. What is delight? Revelation of the word of God inside of you. And it says for that, I said, and what the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So you are not supposed to remain here. With those two things, you must shine with light and glory. You must do what? You must shine. But the problem is ignorance. Many of us don't know that we, we carry the light and the glory of God. Even as children of God, many of us don't know. It be the problem one here. <laughs> we are talking about the light. We are not talking about this uh, uh, electric box. No, 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 no. We are talking about the indwelling of Jesus himself inside of you and the word of God at your disposal. And we are talking about the holy, holy the glory of God, which is the tangible presence of God with the person. If God be for you, who can be against you? Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. This coming year will be your year. Say better, amen. amen. A believing, amen. amen. Number three, I mean, number two now, why must you arise? Number two, if you don't arise, the situation will not change. If you remain where you are, where situation or, you know, life or the enemy has put you and you choose to remain there and refuse to rise, nothing will change. Nothing will change. And I say again, nothing will change in your life. The situation will remain the same. The condition you are passing through will remain the same. That's why you have, until you rise up, you won't know what they call change. You are not getting me. Until you rise or arise, you won't know what is called what? Change. And I will tell you what you must know today. This, this is a men's program. And I know in the name of Jesus, as a result of this anniversary, you will have a testimony. Amen. Say living amen. amen. Say better amen. amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. amen. Now, I want to Okay, let me not go to, to that one for now. Let me not go to that one for now. Let me not go to that one for now. He says, arise and do what? And shine. For you to arise, I just used Baba as an installation the other time. You will need one particular spiritual gift. For you to arise from where you are and get to where you should be. What you need is not faith. Are you following me? You see, the issue of faith has been misunderstood. How many of you here do not have faith? Raise up your hand. You don't have faith too, at all. Raise up your hand. You will realize that everybody has what? Faith. Because it's you need faith. Let me, let, me, let me tell you something. What made you sit on this chair is faith. <laughs> you agree, sir? To so sit on this chair, if I ask you to stand up now and you want to sit back, you won't think about it before you sit on that chair. Why? You have faith that that chair can do what? Carry you. That one day may you not be disappointed. That's a bad account. That's just what they're joking about. Are you following me? But because of your faith, even when I was so shy there, I didn't think about it. I just sat down. Because I believe the chair is good, so it can carry me. That's it. 
And that's a level of faith. I can tell you there is no one who does not have faith. James so tough one, even non-believer. Because what you call faith in church is what they call risk outside there. Life is a risk. Surely, bike man, wait, and the other man stops. You just jump on it. You are just exercising faith. But he will carry you to where you are going. Am I, am I talking sense? Yes, sir. It's a faith you are exercising. Just jump into the car. Kick and move. Faith in it. And Jesus even said, if you have faith like a seed of uh, like, like, uh, like a seed of mustard, he said, you are ready to go. Didn't he say that? He said that. But let me tell you, you need something beyond faith to arise and shine. And that's where I'm going. Listen, every one of you, to make it in life, this is what you need. To shine here on earth, this is what you need. What do you need? It's, it goes beyond faith, though. And that thing is courage. What did I say? Say it again. Courage. Louder. Courage. Hmm. Yes, courage. Only a baraju. You mean have faith and not be courageous. You may have faith to do certain business. You may have the plans. You may have the visions. Everything laid out. But if you are not courageous, you won't step out on it. And that thing will remain on paper for years. Are you hearing me? Let's move from faith to what? Courage. This is how I divine or, you know, construct them, the two of them, faith and courage. Faith to me is like a vehicle. And the courage is like the fuel inside of it. Without fuel, the vehicle cannot do what? Cannot move. Without courage, what you call faith will be useless. Faith is the conception of what you want to do. You will know that this thing is good. You will know that if you do this thing, it will work. Now, courage is the ability to step out and do what? And do it. Many of you have good visions, good plans for years. In fact, there are many things you promise yourself that you will do this year. This is going year 2022. True of us. Did you do them? Many of you know because there is no money or something like that, but the problem is fear. You were not courageous enough to do what? To face it. All those business ideas died because of lack of what? Courage. You remember the story of the four lepers in the Bible? Second Kings chapter 7. You remember their story? There was famine in the land. As lepers, they can't come into the city. You remember the story? Remember also that the Syrian army had besieged their city. And they had been shot out. Three problems in one face. They were there. They couldn't enter the city. And in the city, there was what? Famine. Also at the city gate were the enemies what? Hami. Here they were lepers. They could not go into the city, yet they can't fall back because they will fall into the end of the enemy. Real problem. They were surrounded with real problem. But they got to a point in their life, they just spoke to themselves and said, <laughs> kill and shame be eager. You need to read that account of the story. You, you will realize that these people, they just, they, they just realize that this is either they died there 
or they move in there. Are you following me? Now, they began to speak to themselves. Why are we here? If we remain here, we will die of hunger. Don't forget that they have been there for a long time. Oh. If we remain here, we will die of hunger. We can't go to town. They will kill us. <laughs> they got to a point of decision. And I love what they told themselves. Uh, we better kuku go and fall into the end of the enemy. Because Sikunani twice met a 31. Am I talking to you? But what made them move was what? Courage. Courage is the ability to face your fears without being afraid. Sherry, that is what many Christians lack. You can't, you can't shine without being courageous. Are you following me? All your plans, all your visions, everything you have, they are good. But for you to achieve them, you must be courageous. Nobody wanted to, they wanted to give him a loan of five million. He was afraid. And the bank manager said, look, with what you table before me, take this thing. I trust that you can make something good out of it. The man was shaking. I'm telling you, the man was there. Interest. Ah, Pastor Kilefi, interest. What you offer me? But I said, you see, to be a courageous person, you have to have liver. He was looking for money. He didn't know that the thing could be approved. They now find the man was afraid again to take it. The bank man, you know, try to tell this how to go about this, how to go about this, how to go about Here is the money. To take it, the man was afraid. Everybody has visions and good plans, but courage. Are you hearing me? When we are to build our <laughs> our church, this present church. After the plan, the architect, I was not around one day. They, they, they were about to start building the walls. And I just came in. The man had changed the plan without my consent. I just entered. They learned and whatever. They were digging something else that was different from what was in the plan. I just sent out, what is this? It's like, we plan to have the wall here. But to the man, it was too big for me and the church because we were very few. Then, so the man moved the thing here. And they were already digging when I came in. And I said, Baba, what happened? Ha. Ah. He said, Pastor, train on the moon she. Train on the moon she. I said, how? He said, ah. Roof, Nimbaba, Kishi wall, Molachi Rowo. That's what we told me. Money, that would be the wool away. Shelly Baba in. Ah, that's all. Monty Monzo, roof. Ah, ah. I said, please cover this thing. I return to the plan I gave you. That's what we want. 700 capacity. Don't change it. He said, hey, it is the roof. It is the roof. I said, leave that to God. And he reverted to the original plan. And we had the wall. About one and a half year or two, the roof came on top of it. You know what happened? That man, that architect, never returned since that day to see the project. He was mocking us behind. Pastor, she was up anything. to block Johnny one put the building. Roof, yeah. So after a year, and the thing was not done, he was complaining. He was telling some of my friends. I, I told him. I told him. The roof will call, cost us three point something million then. Then 2011, 2012. 
One day the man was just coming. Come on, roof. Real life story. He didn't know he was just coming. That's the moment you jam the street, you will see the building. When the man saw the roof, I said, it's not your fault. Even me, even my very self that asked you to do it that way, I, I was just speaking and believing God for what he can do, what, not what I can do. Courage is so powerful that if you don't have it, it will make your faith redundant and useless. Why come as a pony back on? Courage is what, is what gives your faith wings to fly. Are you hearing me? That's what you need to arise and now that does courage doesn't mean that there's no problem around you or that there will be no challenges. No, it only means that you don't look at the what at the challenges and the problems. I think I've, I've shared the testimony with you here many years ago. I had no car then. I was traveling to Lagos. This Express road. It was old express road then. We were traveling and I was in a public bus. And a woman sat at the back with a child of about three years old or four. Oh my she did nothing happen. No, no, she was not sick. And in those days, Timba travel, I want to preach in the public bus. So immediately I entered from challenge. I was waiting for the bus to move very well before I start, you know, preaching to people. That was my tradition there. So while I was taking my time, this uh, Guru Maharaji disciple, you, <laughs> you know those guys, come on, we are red. The man just started. I started preaching. I said, what is this? Okay, he will stop. Oh, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. The man didn't stop. Who shall saw jargons? I started praying. We are, I was seated and suddenly that uh, child died. Right then, the, I'm telling you, sir. The guy was just playing with her mother. They, were, we, we, uh, they sat behind me. Nothing. She, she was not sick at all. She was not sick at all. Somehow, she coughed for some few minutes and before you knew what was up, she confessed and died. I didn't say she fainted. Because So we park in that bush. We park along the road. They are right in the midst of the, of the road. And we were trying everything. And the mother was rolling on the, on the road. And the, 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 the child there beside the road. The driver was crying. Driver any in your kus in your kuni no moto only. Sir, as I was there, I had the Holy Spirit. Say, pray for that child. I will raise him. We go in your clear. I had the voice the first time, the second time. I replied that voice. Money can shame me. I'm telling you what I experienced. Lord, I said, not me. Because I want to cover the driver was crying. What is all this? And I had the voice again the third time. Go and pray for that girl. You disgrace will lele. Can you move a kura missy? Somehow, I'm telling you. On to one point, you can't summon courage or real. If you have faith and you don't summon courage, your faith will fly away. You will never hear people say summon faith. What they say is what? Summon courage. <laughs> and I move stylishly to the to the girl. She that almost slim, you want to there was one I found there too in the bus. When I, when I moved towards the girl, the I knew what I wanted to do. 
Ah, ah, file, 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 file. Amu alone. Bola she man she untro eniye. Bola. Ah, kini yatu. I'm telling you. When bola she man she untro eniye. The kadara ni. Bola she call people biopo eniye she lot I say, eh? He was trying to push me back. But I summoned courage. I said, sir, maybe I can pray for now. And I moved towards the child. And I knelt down, Lord, it's it here. Others were crying, they were rolling up and down. Sir, me later, me Monty Moussa. But I prayed. Immediately I prayed. Open your can sin one. Sneeze like this. Bah, bah. He said, What you want? There was noise there on the road. We were celebrating. Or join him on don't pay courage. But wait, you won't pray for my shell. I mean, Jack, bah, bah, bah. Pray a gun be monty most. Why is a light in my name? God resuscitated the boy, the girl. She, he brought her back to life. We entered the car, the bus. But she was it. The man wanted to continue. He said, "Praise you." Ah, Ojoy Henley. <laughs> and the people said, "Toba so, <laughs> we will kill you here." <laughs> Real, what a bad man. The people said, "Mr. Ma, sit down, sit down." Toba so, I'm a wise no boy. You want look for me? My son. So when I saw that, I just quite quiet. And one of the passengers said, Esa, and you pray for me. <laughs> I tell you, I stood up, I began to preach. I began to preach. At the Muslim, at everybody, more preach here, yeah, raw. To the man I find at the Guru Maharaj. On to back by Jesus, I love hell, Neo. I went on, yes, yes, yes. Money, Jesus, you and you put it as a ring, be letting one in bed, me, Bobo Wadi. When I got to Baja, I wanted to alert. At the first of all, I said, I'm going to be imaginable. Ah, hell, hello, I judge my love, my son. Real life story that happened because somebody summoned courage. It's no money you need. No. Even after the vision, after the prayer, now settle down practically and take steps. Is it business you want to do? You can do it. Is it the house you want to build? You can build it. I'm telling you, money is not the first thing. Even your faith is not the first thing. It is called that boldness, that audacity, that confidence. To face what they call mountain or challenges. Those lepers, those four lepers, if they didn't have courage, if they were not courageous, that is where they would remain and die. Do you know what happened to them? Many things happened to them. The moment they moved, the first thing that happened was that their fear left them. And that's what happens. The moment you take steps to move, that spirit called fear will disappear. When they move number two, you know what happened? The enemy they fear fled. Light is still the one. They just add their movement, their steps, and they fled. Even a whole army had the steppings of, a, of, of lepers and they ran away. That's what courage can do. I love a scripture. Is it Psalm 5 verse 3? Psalm 5 verse 3. He said, they, they were afraid where there's no fear. I love that scripture. That's what happens to many of us. You, 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 you are afraid and you fear where there's no what? No fear. Is this Psalm 5 verse 3? Check it for me. Many of us, because the sinker come there. A woman called me. Oh, 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 blood everywhere. And she was crying many years ago. I said, ah, what is the matter? Have you been to the hospital? Only go need. What if I in judge? What if I conclude? And I pray with her. On getting to the hospital, the, the people said, don't worry. 
You believe God with you? That's what your pastor said, but this is the medical clinic. And he believe what you be on my God, if you that Because a jelly ke is your mom. Is it that scripture? Psalm 5, verse 3. You didn't see it. That's not it. Or 3 5. Something like that. It's a scripture that says that. It said, they are afraid where there is no what? Fear. No compare to it. You will arise and shine. Yeah. But be courageous. Be what? Courageous. Stand to your feet. And let us pray. Hallelujah. 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 Lift up your hands and appreciate the King of Glory for the word is sent to us tonight. Magnify that. I can't hear your voice.